This is probably a good time just to point out one thing with watching video in the mobile emulator. As we know, when Flash runs on the phone, it uses the phone's default video codec to play the video. When we're previewing the application in the mobile emulator, Flash is using the QuickTime plugin on your desktop system to display the video. The latest version of the QuickTime player supports several different device video formats, including 3GP. If you're having problems seeing video in the mobile emulator, it may be because the system doesn't have QuickTime installed on it. The best thing to do is to upgrade to the latest version of the QuickTime player, and if available, maybe install a third-party video codec that supports the video format that you're using. Now we mentioned how using bundled video while building out the file size of your application improves the reliability and portability of the app. You'll notice in the emulator at the moment, underneath the test device drop-down list on the top left, you'll see we've got some information about the Swift file we've created. Specifically, I want to draw your attention to the kilobyte size of the application we've just created. In this case, 127.23 kilobytes. Considering that it was about 16K before we put the video in, that's adding a hefty whack of file size onto our Swift file. Working with external device video is a way to keep our Swift file small while still being able to play the video. A way around this is to use external video. So referencing the video file from outside the Swift to keep our Swift file size down and our external video separate to the application. Let's go back and modify our scavenger hunt app now to stop using bundled video and start looking for the video source externally. In our flash file, the only thing we need to edit is the scavenger video object in our library. We want to uncheck the bundle source in Swift for mobile and devices box so that we're now left with just an empty video object. We still want to keep it though checked as video action script controlled. If we click on our video object now and look at the property inspector, we can see that the source information has changed from the name of the file to none external video. Now we need to go into our class file and add the code to reference the external video rather than just play the bundled video that we had in there before. In our on play video method, we want to change this simple play method to actually play and include the URL to the external video. In this case, it'll be media, video, and welcome.3gp. This is all we need to change. Now when we use the play method on our video object, it'll be referencing this external video source and insert that into our video object on our stage. Let's save it and test it. We should now see exactly the same thing displayed, but the Swift file of our application will be much smaller. And straight away, if we look at the top left of our emulator, we can see that the application is now 18.77k, a huge reduction from 120-odd from before. And if I log in and press the play button... So if you can see this playing in your emulator, then you know that it's working. Congratulations. Congratulations indeed. We're now referencing our video file external to the Swift, which is going to make everybody a lot happier.